you can find that in our mission statement that we're we're promoting civility, character, and ethics in young pre-adolescents. The program starts with fifth graders, um, but these are timeless concepts that it's that the more we learn how to treat each other the way we want to be treated, the more we have concern about our community, the more we try to do things the right way when even when others aren't looking, those things. Very, uh, are important regardless of whether you're 10 or you're, you're 60 years old. That need came um, about 11 years ago and uh, educators sitting around the table saying, what do we need to do to provide the support and to grow our youth in our community? We want Lubbock and the surrounding communities to be uh, full of leaders. Um, we have several community partners. Uh, the first partner was Lubbock ISD. They were the ones who we initially partnered with to start the program. As the program has grown, we have added other school districts. We have added community partners such as uh, Ronald McDonald House, um, the Children's Home of Lubbock, Family Promise, um, Extension 4-H, we've adopted them as a partner and so we have our programs and partnerships. Uh, some partners are taking our product, our curriculum, and we train them and they deliver it to their own folks. And in some cases we come in and we do the program delivery. Well, with Lubbock ISD it's a question of if it's an after-school program, because that's typically what we would do with a school district is an after-school program. And so it's a question of getting together with campus administrators, identifying teachers who can be partners with us if they want to be. Um, it's saying where would be the best place to do this and them basically making their campus available for us to do this. Because the kids who come to the campus may not be their own students. They may be coming from other schools. And so establishing that partnership with a campus administrator is very important. It's primarily um, College of Human Sciences and primarily Human Development and Family Studies, but our student volunteers are from all across campus. You know, there are different departments across campus who may hear about what we're doing, and they may want an opportunity to come and um, observe. So we, you know, we can do things like that. I have them come and speak to my class if they're from a different area and they may have a different lens on how we approach youth development. And so, you know, those are those opportunities that do come up. They're not set in stone though. One of the, uh, there's also a student organization in our college um, called SAND. And a lot of our volunteers have come from that um, student organization. The unique thing about the SAND organization is that they focus on nutrition and that is also something that we spotlight in our leadership curriculum. We hope that UFL will be around for years and years, and so really it's not a project with an end date. If anything, we would love to be able to um, serve even more students and youth, and really I, there's no end date. I, I think there's no end date to implementing and um, encouraging youth leadership throughout. Um, UFL was initially funded by United Supermarkets and so they were our corporate sponsor. So they really, really supported us getting off the ground and being able to serve so many different schools. Also um, being able to have that creative freedom the unique thing about uh, United Supermarkets supporting us at the corporate level for the first 10 years is that it, our mission really aligns with the United mission of just that personal, uh, that personal touch really supporting being service minded, leadership minded. We feel very strongly that what UFL has produced is this core nucleus of 
of young people who are very invested in their communities, wherever that community may happen to be. Um, our first group of students have graduated, if you like, and they're now seniors in college. And these are students who come back and they tell us what they're doing with their lives. And it, it's not the sort of thing where I can point to it and say our research definitely caused that. But it certainly supported the development of their awareness and their desire to use their leadership skills in ways that benefit others. It's a mutually beneficial in the sense that it really gives our college students a place to belong, a place to grow, a place to learn, um, a place to be a, a mentor and a leader and feel valued. Well, it is the epitome of the academic experience from my point of view. Um, our research is wrapped around student outcomes. So our participants are anywhere from age nine and 10 all the way up to you know, later teens. And so we're asking, we're surveying them every year about things related to positive youth development and or community involvement and engagement. So we're kind of getting an idea of how their attitudes and their behaviors are shaping. So that's valuable from a research point of view. We dream and we dream big sometimes like, what if we could do this? What if we could do that? And so that is always great motivation for going out and finding other opportunities to write grants for. Um, from an academic point of view, obviously we're trying to publish in scholarly journals and we're going to academic conferences, but we also go to professional conferences where there would be mainly practitioners there. Because we are dealing with foundational issues of development, you know, the identity, the belonging, the concepts of being civil and, you know, applying character to every situation, all those types of things, those are conversations that are desperately needed um, all over the world. But, you know, especially with young people, because that's where we have a chance to make a difference and maybe change the trajectory of the way in which they are going and how they uh, interact with each other and with um, groups that are not necessarily the same as they are. So my freshman year, I had to take an intro to human sciences class and Cece and Kayla, who were the assistant directors of United Future Leaders, came and talked to our class for recruitment. So I volunteered my freshman year. So for the first two semesters, I was just a volunteer. And at the end of that year, they asked me to be a student assistant. So I've been a student assistant for the last year and I'm fixing to finish up my first year of that. So I kind of do the behind the scenes work. I get the materials ready for program delivery. I make copies, I sharpen pencils, but I also help with curriculum writing some. So primarily we work with the Human Sciences College and we have many um, volunteers from nutrition, human development, and family studies, I think we have a few from personal financial planning, I'm not sure. And then we also have some from the educational college, we've had some from the engineering college, different um, pre-med um, majors also have volunteered. Well primarily we work on leadership as we're the United Future Leaders, but there's many components of leadership that we focus on. So civility, ethics, um, personal or uh, emotional security, physical safety, there's many different areas that we focus on. I've learned that communication is key. Sometimes you might be thinking one thing and no one else is on that track, so communication is a big thing for me. So my major is early childhood education, so I plan to work with kids. I'm not sure what setting, maybe in the classroom, but maybe not. So working with these kids has taught me many lessons of classroom management, of just how to communicate with kids, 
how to work with them and how to um, appeal to their interests. So the lesson is engaging. So I've learned that that will help me in my future and it's also helped me in my education as I can apply that right now in my student teaching. Yes, I feel like I've grown as a leader. This program has helped me grow as well as the kids.